live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Hey, welcome back everyone to our live special CUBE coverage in New York City in Manhattan. We're here in Hell's Kitchen in for the CUBE's exclusive coverage of our Big Data NYC event and Strata Data, which is, used to be called Strata Hadoop, used to be Hadoop World, but our event, Big Data NYC, is our fifth year where we gather every year to see what's going on in Big Data, Big Data World, and also produce all of our great research. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE with Peter Burris, head of research. Our next guest is Itamar Anakorian, who's the chief marketing officer at Attunity. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank you very much, good to see you, good to be back. So we've been covering Attunity for many, many years. We've had many conversations. You guys have had great success in big data. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, but the world is changing and we're seeing integ data integration. We've been calling this for multiple years. That's not going away, people need to integrate more. Mm -hmm. But with cloud, there's been a real focus on accelerating the scale component with an emphasis on ease of use, data sovereignty, data mm -hmm. governance. So you, all these things are coming together, so the cloud has amplified mm -hmm. what's going on in the big data world, and it's like, listen, get moving, or you're out of business, has pretty much been the mandate we've been seeing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have been reacting. What's your response uh, at Attunity these days, because you have successful piece parts mm -hmm. with your product offering? What's the big update for you guys with, with mm -hmm. respect to this big growth area? Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, the cloud and data lakes have been a major force, changing the uh, data landscape and data management landscape for enterprises. And over the past few years, we've been working closely with some of the world's leading organizations across different industries as they uh, deploy the first and then second and third iteration of their data lake and big data architectures. And one of the things, of course, we're all seeing is the move to the cloud, whether we're seeing enterprises move completely to the cloud, kind of move their data lakes, that's where they build them, or actually have a hybrid environment where part of the uh, data lake and data warehouse analytics environment is on-prem and part of it is in the cloud. Uh, the other thing we're seeing is that enterprises are starting to mix more of uh, the traditional data lake, the cloud as the platform, and streaming technologies as a way to enable all the modern uh, data analytics uh, that they need. And that's what we have been focusing on, on enabling them to use data across all these different technologies where and when they need it. So the sum of the parts is w worth more if it's integrated together, it seems to be the, the positioning, uh, which is great, it's what customers want, to make it easier. Mm -hmm. What is the hard news that you guys have? Because you have a, some big news. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the news real yeah. quick. Thank you very much. We did, we, we've, today we've announced, we're very excited about it. We've announced a new big release of our data integration platform. Our modern platform now brings together Attunity Replicate, Attunity Compose for Hive, and Attunity Enterprise Manager, or AEM. So these are products that we've evolved significantly, invested a lot over the last few years to enable organizations to use data, make data available, and available in real time across all these different platforms, and then turn this data to be ready for analytics, especially in Hive and Hadoop environments, uh, on-prem and now also in the cloud. So today we've announced a major release with a lot of enhancements across the entire product line. So people might know you guys for the replicate piece. I know that this yeah. announcement was 6.0, but as you guys have the other piece parts to this, mm -hmm. really it's about modernization of mm -hmm. kind of old school techniques. That's really been the driver of your success. What specifically in this announcement makes it you know, really work well for people who are moving real time, mm -hmm. they want to have good data access, what's the big aha uh -huh for, for the customers out there with, with Attunity on this announcement? That's a, that's a great question, thank you. First of all is that we're bringing it all together. So as you mentioned, over the, over the past few years, Attunity Replicate has emerged as the choice of many Fortune 100 and other uh, companies who are building modern architectures and moving data across different platforms to the cloud, to their lakes, and they're doing it in a very efficient way. One of the things we've seen is that they needed the flexibility to adapt as they go through their journey to adapt different platforms. And what we gave them with Replicate was the flexibility to do so. So we gave them the flexibility, we gave them the performance to get the data, and the efficiency to move only the changes of the data as they uh, happen, and to do that in a real-time fashion. Now that's all great, but once the data gets to the data lake, how do you then turn it into a valuable information? That's when we introduced Compose for Hive, which we talked about in our last, uh, last session a few months ago, which basically takes the next, next stage in the pipeline, picking up incremental continuous data that is fed into the data lake and turning those into operational data store, historical data stores, data store that's basically ready for analytics. 
what we've done with this release that we're really excited about is putting all of this together in a more integrated fashion, putting a Tunity Enterprise Manager on top of it to help manage larger scale environments so customers can move faster in deploying these solutions. As you think about the role that Attunity is going to play over time though, uh, it's going to end up being part of a broader mm -hmm. solution for how you handle your data. Uh, imagine for a second the patterns that your customers are deploying. What is Attunity typically being deployed with? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great question. First of all, we're definitely part of a large ecosystem okay, for building the uh, new data architecture, new data management with data integration being more than ever a key part of that bigger ecosystem because what we actually have today is more islands. We have more places where the data needs to go, and to your point, uh, more patterns in which the data moves. One of those patterns that we've seen significantly increase in demand deployment is streaming. So where data used to be batch, right, now we're all talking about streaming. Kafka has emerged as a very common platform, but not only Kafka. If you're on Amazon Web Services, you're using Kinesis. If you're in Azure, you're using Azure Event Hubs. Okay, so you have different streaming technologies. So that's part of how uh, this has evolved. How is that challenge? Because you just bring up a good point. I mean, mm -hmm. with the big trend that customers want is they want either the same code bases in on-prem and if they have the hybrid, which means the gateway, if you will, to the public cloud kind of, they want to have the same code base or move workloads between different clouds, multi-cloud. It seems to be the holy grail. We've identified it. We are taking the position that we think multi-cloud will be the preferred architecture going forward. I mean, mm -hmm. not necessarily this year, but it's going to get there. But as a customer, I don't want to have to rebuild employees <laughs> and get skill development and retraining mm -hmm. on Amazon, Azure, mm -hmm. Google. I mean, each one has its own different path. You mentioned it. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you talk to customers about that? Because they might be like, whoa, I want it, but how do I work in that environment? You guys have a solution for that? Uh, we do, uh, that's, uh, and, and in fact, one of the things we've seen, to your point, we've seen the adoption of multiple clouds, and even if that adoption is staged, what we're seeing is more and more customers that are actually referring to the term lock-in in, res in respect to the cloud. So do we put all the eggs in one, one cloud or do we allow ourselves the yeah. flexibility to move around and use different clouds and, and also mitigate our risk in that, uh, that respect? So what we've done in the, uh, from that perspective is, first of all, when you use the Trinity platform, we take away all the development complexity. So in the Trinity platform, it is very easy to set up you know, your data flows, your data pli pipelines, and it's all common and consistent. So whether you're working on-prem, whether you're working on Amazon Web Services, on Azure, or on Google, or other platforms, it all looks and feels the same. So first of all, you, know, you solve the issue of the diversity, mm -hmm. but also the complexity. Because what we've done is, this is the one of the big things that Attunity has focused on, was reducing the complexity, allowing to configure these data pipelines without development uh, efforts and resources. One of the challenges, or one of the things you typically do to take complexity out is you do a better job of design up front. Yes. Uh, and I know that Attunity's got a tool set that starts to address some of these things. Take mm -hmm. us a little bit through how your customers are starting to think in terms of designing flows mm -hmm. as opposed to just cobbling together things in a bespoke way. Mm -hmm. How is that starting to change as customers gain experience with uh, large yeah. data sets uh, the ability to, the, the need to aggregate them, the ability to present them to developers in different ways. Yeah, so that's a great point. And again, one of the things we focused on is to make the process of developing or configuring these da different data flows easy and modular. So first of all, in Attunity, you can set up different, uh, different flows in different patterns, and you can then make them available uh, to others for consumption. So some uh, uh, create the data ingestion, some create the data ingestion, and then create the data transformation with Compose for Hive. And with the Trinity uh, Enterprise Manager, we've now also introduced uh, APIs that allow you to create your own microservices, consuming and using the services enabled by the platform. So we provide more flexibility to put all these different solutions uh, together. What's the biggest uh, thing that you see from a customer standpoint uh, from a problem that you solve. If you had mm -hmm. to kind of lay it out, you know, the classic, you know, what problem do you solve? Because yeah. there are many, right? So yes. take us through the key problem, and then if there's any secondary yeah. issues that you guys can address customers, that sure. seems to be where the conversation starts. What are sure. the key problems that you solve? So I think one of the major problems we solve is scale. Our customers uh, that are deploying data lakes are trying to deploy and use data that is coming not from five or 10 or even 50 data sources, we are working at hundreds, going on thousands of data sources now. 
So that in itself represents a major challenge to our customers, and we're addressing it by dramatically simplifying and making the process of setting those up very repeatable, very easy, and then providing the management facility. Because when you have hundreds mm -hmm. to thousands, management becomes a bigger issue to, to operationalize it. So we invested a lot in the management facility for those from a monitoring, control, security. How do you secure it? The data lake is uh, used by many different groups. So how do we allow each group to see and work only on, the, on what belongs uh, to that group? So that's part of it. So, so again, the scale is the major thing there. The other one uh, is real timeliness. So we talked about the move to streaming, and a lot of it is in order to enable streaming analytics, real-time analytics. <laughs> well, that's only as good as, uh, as your data, so you need to capture data in real time. And that's, of course, has been our claim to fame for a long time, being uh, the leading independent provider of CDC, change data capture technology. What we've done now, and also expanded significantly with the new release, version 6, is uh, creating universal database streaming. So we take databases, yeah, we take databases, all the enterprise databases, and we turn them into live streams. So when you think, by the way, about the most common way that people have used, customers have used to bring data into the lake from yeah. a database, it was Scoop. And Scoop is a great, easy you know, yeah. software to use from an open source perspective, but it's scripting and batch. So you're building your new modern architecture with the tool that effectively is scripting and batch. What we do with CDC is we enable to take a database, and instead of the database being something you come to periodically to read it, we actually turn it into a live feed. So as the data changes in the, in the database, we stream it, we make it available across all these it different changes platforms. changes the definition of what live streaming is. We're live streaming the cube, we're there data. You we're data streaming, and yeah. you get great data. So here's the question for you. Mm -hmm. This is a good topic, I love this topic. We, Peter and I talk about this all the time. And it's been addressed in the big data world, but it's kind of, you can see the pattern going mainstream in society, globally, geopolitically, yes. and also in society. Batch processing and data in motion or real time. Mm -hmm. Streaming brings up this use case to the, to the end customer, which is, this is where they've done it before, certainly store things in data lakes, it's not going to go away, mm -hmm. you're going to store stuff, but the real game is in motion. Correct. So, how do you describe that to a customer when you go out and say, hey, you know, you've been living in a batch world, but wake up to the real world called real time. How do you get them to align? Some people get it right away, I see that. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. How do you talk about that? Because that seems to be a real cultural thing going mm -hmm. on right now, or you know, uh, operational readiness yeah. from the customer standpoint. Sure. Can you just talk through the, your, your, your feeling on that? Yeah, so first of all, some of it gets lost in translation. <laughs> and we see quite a few um, uh, companies and even IT departments that when you talk, when they refer to real time or their business tells them we need real time, what they understand from it is when you ask for the data, the response will be immediate. So you get real time access to the data. But the data is from last week. <laughs> so you get real time <laughs> access, but for last week's data. And that, that's where what yeah. we try to do is to basically say, wait a second, when you mean <laughs> real time, what does real time mean? And we start to understand what yeah. is the meaning of using last week's data versus or yesterday's data versus the real time data, and that makes a big difference. We actually see that today the uh, access, the availability, the ability to act on the real time data, that's uh, the um, frontier of competitive differentiation. Uh, that's what makes the customer experience better. That's what makes the uh, uh, business of more operationally uh, efficient than the competition. So it's the data, not so much the process of what they used to do. Their mm -hmm. version of real time is I responded to you pretty quickly. Yeah, ex exactly. The, the other thing that's interesting is because we see it with, uh, again, change the capture becoming a critical component of the modern data architecture. Traditionally, we used to talk about different type of tools and technology. Now CDC itself is becoming a critical part of it. And the reason is that it serves uh, and it answers a lot of fundamental needs that are now becoming critical. One is the need for real-time data. Uh, the other one is efficiency. If you're moving to the cloud, and we talked about this mm -hmm. earlier, if your data lake is going to be in the cloud, there's no way you're going to reload all your data mm -hmm. because the bandwidth is going to get in the way. So you have to move only the delta. So you need the ability to capture and move only the delta. So CDC becomes fundamental both in enabling the real time as well as the efficient, the low impact uh, data integration. You guys have a lot of partners, technology partners, global SIs, resellers, mm -hmm. a bunch of different partnership levels. So the question I have for you, I'd love to get your, your reaction and share your insight into is, okay, as the relationship to the customer who has the problem, what's in it for me? I want to move my business forward. I want to get into digital business. I need to get at my real time data as it's mm -hmm. happening. Whether it's near real time or real time, that's, you know, Evolution, mm -hmm. but 
but ultimately they have to move their developers down a certain path, they'll usually hire a partner. Mm -hmm. So the relationship between partners and, and you, the supplier, to the customer has changed yes. That's correct. recently. How is that evolving? So first of all, it's evolving uh, in several ways. We have invested on our part to make sure that uh, we're building uh, Tunity as a leading vendor in the ecosystem of the system integration consulting companies. We work with um, pretty much all the major global uh, system integrators as well as regional uh, ones, boutique ones that focus on the emerging technologies as well as get the model analytic type platforms. We work a lot with uh, um, plenty of them on uh, major corporate data center level uh, migrations to the cloud. So again, the motivations are different, but are we invest a lot in more you're specializing and seeing more specialty? Yeah. So we've been, What's uh, the trend? We, we've been a technology and partner of choice to both Amazon and Microsoft for uh, again, enabling, facilitating the data migration to the cloud. And they have, of course, their uh, select or preferred uh, or uh, group of partners they work with. So we all come together to create yeah. these, uh, these solutions. Yes. Edomar, what's the goals for Attunity as we wrap up here? I'll give you the last word. Mm -hmm. uh, as you guys have this big announcement, you're bringing it all together. Yep. Integrating is key. It's always been your ethos that it, mm -hmm. it, in the company. Where is this next level? What's the next milestone for you guys? What do you guys see yeah. going forward? Yeah. So first of all, we're going to continue to, to modernize. So we're really excited about the new announcement we did today. Replicate 6, AEM 6, Compose, the new version of Compose for Hive that now also supports small um, uh, data lakes, mm -hmm. Hortonworks, Cloudera, EMR. Uh, and a key point for us was expanding AEM to also enable analytics on the data we generate as data flows through Attunity. So the whole point is modernizing data integration, providing more intelligence in the process, reducing the complexity, okay, and facilitating the automation end-to-end. -end. So we're going to continue. Uh, to so automation, in terms of big, is big Automation time. is a big thing for us. Again, the point is you need to scale. You know, to scale, we want to generate things for you so you don't need to develop for every piece. So we automate the automation. Okay, yeah, yeah. The, the whole point is to deliver the solution faster, and the way we're going to do it is to continue to enhance each one of the products in its own space, if it's replication across systems, compost for hyper transformations and uh, uh, pipeline automation, and AEM for management, but also to create the integration between them. So again, for us, is to create a platform that for our customers, they get more than the sum of the parts, they get the unique capabilities that we bring together in this platform. Itamar, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Congratulations to Intunity, uh, and uh, you guys Bringing it all together, congratulations. Thank you very much. Good to be This is CUBE, live coverage. Breaking it down here in New York City, in Manhattan. I'm John Furrier, Peter Burris. Be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>